Electric bikes are some of the coolest tech that I've seen this year. They're fast, they have a lot of range, and they keep on getting better and better. You might remember from the previous video where I reviewed the Rad Power Bikes and how awesome those were out in the snow. These bikes are quite a bit less expensive and can still do the same stuff. Anchor sent me both these bikes to review on my channel, so I'm gonna unbox them, take them out for a spin, see how they work, and give you my opinion. Let's get started. In the last couple years, electric vehicles like electric skateboards, electric bikes, electric cars have all been coming more and more prevalent in the news and online. They're getting easier and easier to buy all the time. And that's because the technology is constantly improving. What you buy this year will be completely different than what you can buy next year because it's improving so fast. Now I haven't taken these bikes apart yet, but I imagine that these are powered by the same circular lithium ion batteries that we see inside of like the Tesla cars, the Anchor powerhouse that I took apart last week, and the previous Rad Power Bike. Remember, I'll link all of this stuff down in the video description so you can check it out and see the specs and things, but it's really exciting to see how things are progressing over time. And just because things are getting so good so rapidly doesn't mean you have to hold off and wait to buy one. Yeah, technology is always improving, but there's no need to hold off when things are as good as they are right now. You about done yet? Yeah, I mean, I think I got it. The horn sounds like some kind of SOS signal. But other than that, it works pretty well. So this bike right here is called the Rad Power Bike, and this is what I've reviewed before last year. You know, we took it out in the snow. It's got these huge, thick tires. This is the bike that was just barely sent to me from the Anchor Company. It's also got some pretty thick tires, not quite as big as the Rad Rover, but still pretty massive. Personally, I think the Anchor bike does look a little cooler. It's got the red accents all over the middle frame and here along the seat as well. It's a pretty good looking bike. I'll talk about this one here in a second. It's quite a different looking beast, but we'll get to that after we're done riding the big boys. Another benefit of this anchor bike is that it does have a fender on the back that keeps like the mud and snow from flipping up on your backpack if you're going to school or going to work or something like that. This bike does not have a fender on the back or the front. This one does have a fender on the front, but I just didn't install it, so we'll put that on later. So the biggest difference between these two bikes, I mean, they're both fat tires, they're both electric, they both have motors in the back. The biggest difference is price. The one that I got sent from Amazon is about $800, and the one over here, the Rad Power Bike, that is about $1,500. Now, in order to test these, we're gonna do a couple different things. We're gonna ride them side by side, see what the acceleration is, and I've enlisted the help of my brother, his name is Spencer, to help me out. So in order to turn on the Rad Power Bike, there's a power button right here along the side. I can just press that, that gets the power going up here to the console. Um, this is also a secondary power button. And so here we can see the miles per hour, how many total miles it has, the wattage, the pedal assist mode, and how much battery it has left. Now this bike is a little bit different. This is the one I got from Amazon. Right here, there is a key that needs to be turned on. So if you lose the key, the bike will not work. That's a little bit annoying. And then it has a handle that flips up. This is how you charge it right here, plugs into the wall, and then the whole battery pack can be removed so you can swap these out if you want seat lifts up battery pulls out seat goes back in and then here the heads up display is not quite as in depth as over on the rad power bike but you just hold on the power button for three seconds and the whole thing turns on it still has the pedal assist modes um, the low medium and high and then i'm guessing this is the battery indicator we haven't burned this down enough this is my first time riding this bike both of the bikes have the leds in the front so you can ride them at night this one has your standard five gears in the back and then this one also has the same gear setup so a standard five gears and the throttle location is in the same spot just right here it's kind of like a motorcycle you just grab that pull it and it starts accelerating the whole bike all right so i am currently not pedaling my bike everything is going off of the electricity now the top speed of this thing is rated right around 16 miles per hour now legally electric bikes can't go faster than 20 miles per hour or that makes them like a street legal vehicle or something like that so i think the rad power bike maxes out at 20. so technically it's probably going to win this race but there's only one way to find out all right, Spence, you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so what's gonna happen right now is we're both gonna take off. You know, we have our little throttles right here. The bikes are both powered on and ready to go. And we're gonna take it and we're gonna go along this path, wind around and end up at that bridge over there. Right, don't cut into my lane. <laughs> okay. Count of one, two, three. I maxed out. Oh man. All 
All right, so were you on the throttle the whole time? Or did you let off around the corners? I let off on the corners. Okay, I did the same thing, but you definitely pulled away much quicker than I did. Your acceleration was a lot more. All right, so this time around, we're gonna do a straightaway shot, see what the top speed is, and to see what the acceleration is like without like a turn. And it looks pretty sweet. The straightaway shot right here with the mountains in the background, and I think we have the drone positioned somewhere up there. You ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Speed, no pedaling. Spencer kills me off the road. Whoa! So even his top speed is a little bit faster than mine. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right, Spencer. So the top speed of your bike was faster than mine, and it also accelerated quicker. So is it worth double the price? I think this bike would be a good starter bike. Maybe not as good of a commuter bike as the rad bike. So after looking into it a little bit more, the motor on the Rad Power Bike, the one that uh, my brother was riding, that one is a 750 watt motor. And watt just means like how much power it has. The motor on the Anchor Bike or the Ancher Bike that I was riding is a 300 watt motor. The motor on the Anchor Bike, even though it's half the price, it's also half the power. The physical features of the bike are the same, but when it comes to that motor size, it just doesn't have the oomph and consistency that the larger motor does. So I guess at this stage in the electric vehicle game, you're kind of getting what you pay for and at this moment paying double gets you twice the size of motor so that's just something to consider when buying an electric bike all right so if you remember from the first part of this video they actually sent me two bikes and this one is quite a bit different than the first one not just because of how it looks but how it behaves this whole bike can unfold in half and then the whole thing can just lock into place like that so it won't fold in half while you're riding it so the biggest difference between this bike and the other bike is obviously that it folds in half, as well as the smaller tire size, and the battery location is actually right here on the front inside of this little pouch, instead of under like the back side of the bike like it was before. But it still has a top speed of 16 miles per hour, and it's a lot lighter and more portable. And when I say light, I would say it's probably about 30 pounds, give or take, 35 pounds, because batteries and motors still weigh quite a bit. So right here, there is a major shock in the back. So look, if I press down on the back seat, there's some major absorption going on there. And this one also has shocks on the front tire, which is quite a bit different than the mountain bike, which had no shocks on the front tire. It just had the huge fat tires. So even though this bike is a little bit smaller as far as like the tires and stuff go, the motor is smaller as well. The total price of this bike is 750 bucks and the motor is a 250 watt versus the 300 watt that we tried before and the 750 watt from the rad power bike it's cheaper lighter but also slightly less powerful i'll have all the pricing and stuff linked down in the video description and the most important thing is when you're buying these bikes make sure you read the reviews about them like i've tested these initially and i've given my opinion on them but your best bet is going to be reading the reviews from other customers who have tested the bikes before you can usually trust what the reviews say Either way, I really like where this electronic technology is headed. In the future, I think everything is gonna be electric. Bikes, cars, anything, every mode of transportation is gonna be electric. So I'm gonna pack this thing back up. I'll flip this up, unlatch it here, and the whole thing can fold in half. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of these bikes or any electric vehicles that you want me to test in the future, Tesla is on the schedule. Let me know down in the comments. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around. Broom, broom.